to my channel. It's Ruthie Patuti and I'm back with another video. Today, I am going to be talking about product ingredients. You hear me? Product ingredients. Product ingredients. <laughs> I was originally going to do a video about, you know, what's in my natural hair stash, but I didn't know how much value that will bring to you guys. If you're really interested, like, comment, let me know, and I will film that video for you. Um, to be honest, out of all this whole thing, I probably use like five to six products consistently. Um, but there's a method to the madness. So again, if you're interested, let me know. Today, though, we are focusing on product ingredients. I'm sure you guys are familiar with those naturalistas that you probably think are just over the top. They're doing the most. Why must they know parabyl sulfate, dimethicone, etc., etc., etc.? It's too much. It's really too much. Like you pick up a product, and literally all of this is ingredients. But, you know, recently with quarantine, we have more time to do the things that we've been putting off for a long period of time. And for me, I was like, you know, it's time that I understand product ingredients a little bit more. I'm not a pro at it now. I don't know every single thing that can be listed on a bottle, but I have an idea of certain classes of ingredients, what they're supposed to do for you. Um, so if you're interested in learning that, keep on watching. So there's several reasons why it's important to just familiarize yourself. I'm not saying know every ingredient, but familiarize yourself with what sorts of ingredients are in your natural hair products or even in any product you use on your body. The first reason is because you want to stay away from the toxic stuff. And then the second thing is based on your hair needs, you want to be able to respond to those needs and treat it appropriately. So in this video, I'm going to be discussing five types of ingredients that you are likely to see on natural hair products starting with my first point things you want to stay away from so i'm sure a lot of you have heard about sulfates and how sulfates are bad for you and how you should stay away from sulfates i'm sure you've heard the term sulfate free shampoo so what is a sulfate first of all a sulfate is a surfactant a surfactant is a type of product that can help lift and cleanse and clarify your hair from dirt and oils. So it sounds like a good thing, right? That's what we want. We want a clarifying shampoo that can remove all those things. The problem is sulfates can be harsh at times and over time it can even remove the naturally producing oils from your hair that help keep your hair moisturized so it can dry out your hair. That is the main reason people try to stay away from sulfates. I haven't really made it a point to stay away from sulfates so I'm not one of those people that's like I gotta stay away from sulfate. I, gotta, I can only use sulfate free shampoos. The idea is if you use it too frequently and if you're not able to replenish moisture back into your hair then you have a problem on your hands. But if you use it in moderation and you have a good moisturizing regimen, then you should be okay. The next product that is not so hot in the natural hair community and actually in all beauty, not just hair care, are parabens. Now these I would put a red X on. A paraben is actually an ingredient that closely resembles estrogen. Estrogen is a hormone. So imagine you're putting a hormone-like ingredient on your hair, on your scalp, on your skin. Over time, that could add up and cause hormone imbalances and other really serious diseases. Now, the FDA limits how much parabens companies can put in their products. But who's to say you can have parabens in your shampoo, in your conditioner, in your leave-in, in your detangler, in your sealant, in your lotion, and that can all add up to be at levels that you really don't want it to be. I wouldn't even say eh, in moderation. No, try to stay away. So number three, onto the good stuff. Humectants. What are humectants? Humectants are products that attract moisture and try to keep moisture on surfaces like your hair. Examples of common humectants that you guys are probably familiar with. Glycerin, castor oil, which I use a lot of when I started off my natural hair journey. Um, honey is a great humectant. Hyaluronic acid, which is primarily used in like skincare products. Um, Sorbitol is a humectant. Propylene glycol is a humectant. Um, so these are things that you want to see in your hair products that you're hoping to help moisturize your hair. Now the next thing, products that can help strengthen and fortify your hair, proteins, right? There's a whole spectrum of how much protein, what type of protein, low porosity, high porosity. It can get really complicated. 
but examples of these proteins that you can find in your hair product include wheat protein, keratin, silk, soy, collagen, rice protein. Okay, and then the number five, the fifth ingredient or type of ingredient that you can commonly see in hair products are silicones. Silicones provide slip. They help protect the hair and they help smooth the hair. So a good example of where you can find silicones are heat protectants because they coat the hair, they protect the hair from the damage of heat. Um, you can also find a lot of silicone in conditioners because they provide that slip that helps you detangle and really get the job done there. So example of silicones, I'm not going to try to pronounce these because mm. with that being said, I have only just scratched the surface because like I said, do you see this list? This is not just, <laughs> this is not just humectants, proteins, uh, silicones, paraben sulfate is a lot much more than that. The one thing I will say is a lot of times the ingredient list is listed from the highest concentration to the lowest concentration. So the first couple ingredients you see on that list are the most important to take note of. So let's test this out. Let me test my knowledge. <laughs> let's pick out a product from this stash and see if I can identify or recognize the first five ingredients. Let's go with this. Okay. <laughs> let's go with this guy. We're gonna read the ingredient list and we're gonna see if I actually can identify the first five products on here to see what is it gonna do for my hair. So this is the Shea Moisture Sugar Cane Extract and Meadowwood Foam Seed Silicone Free Miracle Styler Leave-In Treatment. First off the bat, this says it's a silicone free leave-in treatment and it also doubles as a heat protectant. So why does it say silicone free? What's the problem with silicone? Silicone isn't necessarily bad for you. It's just if it builds up, it's hard to remove and you're probably going to need a sulfate or something strong to remove those layers from your hair. So okay, I get it. Silicone free. First ingredient, water. Whew. I know that one. <laughs> then ceteral alcohol. So I didn't really talk about alcohols in this video, but I do know that this type of alcohol isn't the type that dries out your hair. It's a fatty alcohol and it actually helps provide slip and provide like better manageability for your hair. Check. Um, glycerin, vegetable glycerin. So we have a humectant that will help moisturize my hair. Number four, caprylic or capric triglyceride, another type of fatty compound fatty substance that will help provide um, moisture and slip. I don't know, if I've, I've, I recognize it, but I don't know that in detail, but it sounds like it's a, when I hear triglyceride, I think of something that's like fatty. A triglyceride is a lipid, so it's gonna provide like, and then number five is dicapryl ether. I don't know what that is, but okay, so out of the five things, I was definitely able to recognize two and I was familiar with another two and the fifth one, I had no idea what it was. So that being said, you don't have to memorize all ingredients, just familiarize yourself with it to know what it's gonna do for you. So this I know is silicone free, so it's not gonna provide buildup for my hair. It has humectants, it main ingredient is water, so it's really gonna moisturize my hair and it also has fatty alcohol, fatty substances that will help provide manageability for my hair. So guys, I challenge you to try to familiarize yourself with ingredients. I'm gonna leave links of um, online sources that I use to try to educate myself. There is um, a website by, is, I don't know how to say, Schwarzkopf? Schwarzkopf is a, it's a hair brand that has an ingredient library. So it lists different sorts of ingredients and what their purpose is. Um, I'll also link that down below. I hope this video was useful, helpful, kind of makes it less intimidating to learn about ingredients and products so that you can be that next person in Target like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you have a great week ahead of you um and i'll catch you in my next one bye